It is what it is. It is what it is. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Bomber video preseason. And Bombers going to come up short this one. 31 to 10 in favor. Stampeders over the Bombers. So. I, d I was not able to actually go to this game. This game my parents were at. I actually, it was my buddy's 21st birthday, so I was there uh, at that. It was important. But uh, however, I were I was keeping track of the game um, and just kind of how that was going and kind of the mess that it was. So Terry Wilson, unfortunately, was not really able to continue on that kind of success from his first game through two picks. And the offense just really never got going for the Bombers. I mean, obviously, they lost, you know, by 21 points, only got 10 points in the game, and that touchdown that they got uh, was off of a punt return. So, I mean, I mean, good good on them getting a punt return touchdown, uh, but when that's the only offense that you can bring to the table, just not ideal. Um, from what I heard, it sounded like Sheehan had a decent game, which, because that, that's the thing, special teams were really the only, um, like your kickers and punters were the only times when you had maybe some more uh, veteran players in the game, as it sounded like th there really just wasn't much for a veteran presence uh, for for the Bombers here. And it, it, it is what it is, like the, uh, like the pre-intro suggests. It is what it is. Um, and at the end of the day, if, you know, hopefully they can take whatever good they can out of this and just be ready uh, come regular season. Now, one of the reasons for the Bombers sitting as many players as they did was just, you know, obviously preseason, but even at home, typically at home, teams will play a little bit more. So the question is, is that why did the Bombers do that? My my reason, I believe at least, is because of all the injuries that have been happening in the preseason, whether that's in practice or in the game, it's obviously more likely in a game. Both the Bombers and the Stampeders have felt the effect of this because Cam Lawson, uh, Bombers defensive tackle starter, uh, who would play with Jake Thomas and Jefferson and Haba on that defensive line, uh, got injured in that first game against Saskatchewan. And it looks like he might be out for the season. Um, you know, in again, kind of a meaningless game. Malik Henry just absolutely obliterated his knee, and so he won't be able to join the Stampeders for that for that season. He actually just completely destroyed the tendon between his kneecap and his shin. So he there like that is end of the season for him, and it sucks. It's a really unfortunate thing, but that's just kind of the, the way it goes. And so Bombers playing it safe here. I'm completely cool with that. So Coleman and and uh, Lofton were kind of the two offensive tackles uh, for Winnipeg. And overall, I was I was happy to see them get some field time, even though, and again, they weren't really able to do much. Because really, the, the, the Bombers in this game, they just they got to get more offense. They really weren't able to get a ton. Uh, Terry Wilson went 10 for 17, so... Not really continuing much on what he had last game, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, he's a rookie. And it's one of those things where I don't expect him to go out there and just completely rip the league up and do all this all this and that. And so it is what it is. Um, Myron Mitchell had a decent rushing game. Um, I saw that, uh, I think his name is Mastrogius. Uh, he had a good, uh, decent game in that regard. But th that's the thing. Like, this game, defensively, we were okay. And offensively, we just weren't great. Like, I mean, if we look at the Calgary side of things, they, they just kind of, they were running circles around us. Jake Mayer, he'd go four for five as well as Ventrice, uh, at quarterback. Uh, Matthew Schiltz went five for 13, so not great time for him. Uh, but Logan Bonner, I heard that he was decent this game. He went six for nine and got himself a touchdown. And then I also heard... That on the Saskatchewan side of things, wide receiver Eccles, uh, number 78, I believe, uh, he had a, a pretty good game for them. And it, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, 10 receptions. Uh, that was, um, looks like it was 10 attempts, 8 receptions, 160. Wow. Okay, so he really had one hell of a game. Um, this is DeBario Houston's first time back uh, in Winnipeg after leaving at the end of last season. Um, and so obviously it's kind of sad. Loved Mario Houston last year, just constantly was getting interceptions left, right and center. However, I really think Evan Holm can fall into that role this year. 
Uh, I want you guys to stay tuned though, definitely, as I'm going to be having a uh, video coming out uh, this week in uh, before the Alouettes um, game on Thursday. And that will be a proper season preview for the Bombers. Uh, I'm going to be doing one on C uh, CFL Central as well, which will be a league-wide one. We'll cover the Bombers, Riders, Stamps, Elks, whole CFL. And so make sure you guys stay tuned for that on uh, not CFL Central. I said CFL Central. However, we changed it. Canadian Football Central. We just did the rebrand, so I'm just still uh, getting that through my head because I, I forget things. That's how life goes, though. Uh, I saw that Demetrius Ford had some time on the field today. Uh, which surely isn't going to confuse anyone with Tyrell Ford, considering they have the same last name and play the same position. <laughs> so it is what it is in that regard. But I mean, if you're the Bombers, like if I'm if I'm looking at at the stats here offensively, you give up three in the first quarter. Okay, give up eight in the second, but at least they put up seven themselves. But again, that's off a punt. That's off a punt return touchdown. So it's not the offense producing uh, those points really. Third quarter, Stamps go seven, we get three. And in the fourth, Stampeders would go 13 and we would get nothing. So they, the Stampeders in the second half of this game gave up a field goal and that is it. And so it's one of those things where I, I under, if we're not getting touchdowns every play, that's fine. It is what it is, but you can't, you got to at least be getting into field goal range at, at as much as possible, at least every second drive, at least, because you can't just be throwing opportunity away and away and away. And we have guys like Sergio Castillo that will hit those kicks. Castillo is a great kicker. Um, and so it's one of those things where, am I upset about this game? Not really. I mean, again, it's a preseason game where there's a lot of guys not in the lineup. Zach Caleros didn't even touch the field. However, I'm going to show you here because... We are a season ticket member once again this year, even though I wasn't at the game tonight. I have the Zach Caleros bobblehead. So thank you to the Blue Bombers for including that in the season ticket package. Lovely stuff right there. Um, but overall, like, I think, you know, I'll, I know some people that are worried just because we lost both games in the preseason. But personally, I'm not that worried. There's, there's so, like, there's so many pieces on this team that were not shown in the preseason or little bits of it were shown, but never really in full tandem. And I, I think that us losing these first two games in the preseason is fine in the sense of that if it means that more rookies are on the field and there's more gives bombers management a, a better idea of the talent pool they have in that practice roster it means that heaven forbid anything happened to any of our starters because that it will it's this is football like you know guys get injured um it gives them a better idea of who can then come in and fill those spots when the games do matter come the regular season. Obviously, there's guys like Janarian Grant that we lost. There's guys like Rasheed Bailey that we've lost. Um, in a bunch of aspects of our game, guys like Demario Houston, all of that. And so the only way that we're going to be able to properly fill those spots is if we know that what we have. Because the, thing, the fact of the matter is, is that the Bombers are a team that is close to the salary cap. I mean, we're talking about a great cup contender. They're going to be spending that money. They have so many guys on the team that are on some expensive contracts. Not because they're not worth it, but because they are worth it. Guys like Zach Caleros are making just tons and tons of money. But that's because he is the greatest quarterback in this entire league. So, question is, do are we should we be worried about this? No. We should just... Push on forward. I'll have that preview video. We'll we'll look at it. And honestly, if I'm the Bombers, all eyes on Thursday. We're, we have the home opener, first game of the season against the Montreal Alouettes. And God damn it, I want some redemption for losing the Grey Cup to them last year. That's still, oh, that bugs me. But, you know, start the season strong. Don't start the season with a loss. They'll be a tough team. Uh, the Alouettes and the Bombers are probably gonna are going to be the top two teams, I guess, in their respective conferences. I know a lot of people say in BC. However, uh, you know, every time BC goes up against Winnipeg, when push comes to shove in the playoffs, Bombers find a way to get it through. So it is what it is. Let me know what you guys thought of the game today. Make sure you guys like, share, and comment down below. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe as well if you have not already. Check out Canadian Football Central if you have not. Uh, also, lots of Jets content if you are a hockey fan on this channel. And I will see you guys next time.